A high protein diet is often claimed to assist weight loss. Some claim that it can boost energy expenditure by increasing the thermic effect of feeding, and some claim that it makes you feel more satiated so you naturally eat fewer calories. However, are these claims really true? Can a high protein diet be helpful for weight loss? And to what magnitude can it be beneficial? First, we need to understand how weight loss occurs in the first place. This is a result of the net balance when comparing energy intake versus expenditure. Energy intake is simply the total amount of calories consumed via food and drinks throughout the day. Energy expenditure is the total amount of calories we burn each day, which occurs via three primary components. Basal metabolic rate, the thermic effect of food, and physical activity. Physical activity can also be subcategorized into intentional exercise and consequential movement, also known as NEAT. And the net balance when comparing intake versus expenditure determines our change in body weight over time. Consuming more calories than we expend results in weight gain, consuming equal calories to what we expend results in weight maintenance, and consuming fewer calories than we expend results in weight loss. So for protein, or any other factor for that matter, to promote weight loss, it needs to either help us eat fewer calories and or increase the amount of calories we expend. First, let's look at the influence of protein on energy intake. So the question is, does consuming more protein result in consuming fewer total calories? One way in which this might occur is via the effects of protein on satiety. It is sometimes claimed that consuming high protein foods makes you feel fuller compared with consuming foods higher in carbohydrates or fat. And when looking at this in isolation, we do tend to find that high protein foods typically promote greater satiety. This study compared the satiety responses after consuming a 240 calorie serving of various different foods. It was found that many high protein foods were highly satiating, such as lean fish, beef and eggs. When looking at the correlations between different food compositions and satiety, a negative association was found for fat content. Whereas protein, fiber, and water content showed a positive relationship, and carbohydrate and starch content essentially had a neutral relationship. So when comparing small servings of food in isolation, high protein foods seem to have a greater satiety effect. However, the more important question is, does this also extrapolate to the diet as a whole? In other words, does an overall high protein diet result in greater satiety throughout the course of the day and for multiple days? Well, high protein diets may promote satiety too, but not to the same magnitude as the acute effects. For example, this study compared the effects of protein intake on hunger and fullness. 17 overweight women consumed 1250 calories per day for six consecutive days with three different diets. A low-protein diet consisting of 48 grams per day coming from plant-based sources. A low-protein diet consisting of 48 grams per day with the protein mostly coming from beef. Or a high-protein diet consisting of 124 grams per day mostly coming from beef also. It was found that on the last day of the diets, overall hunger was slightly lower and fullness was slightly greater when consuming the high-protein diet compared with the other two low-protein diets. So, based on these satiety responses, we would expect that individuals consuming a high-protein diet would naturally consume fewer calories throughout the day. But does this occur in reality? Well, there are some mixed findings in the research. There is some evidence finding that high-protein diets promote a lower calorie intake. This was seen in this study, which looked at the association between macronutrient intake and energy intake in older adults. It was found that consuming more protein in the diet was associated with a lower calorie intake, whereas there was no significant association between carbohydrate intake and total calorie intake. And a higher fat intake was associated with a higher calorie intake. While this evidence suggests that a high protein intake is associated with a reduced calorie intake, it isn't entirely clear if protein is causing this or if there are other mediating factors. We also have some other evidence finding that the relationship between protein intake and body mass index is relatively weak. This was seen in this study, which looked at the association between protein intake and various different factors in Australian adults. It was found that higher protein intakes were weakly associated with a lower body mass index, but not to any appreciable magnitude. 
Furthermore, other direct evidence suggests that consuming more protein earlier in the day doesn't significantly influence subsequent calorie intake for the remainder of the day. This was seen in this study, which compared the effects of consuming a milkshake drink with different macronutrient contents on subsequent energy intake. On three separate occasions, 40 adults consumed a standardized breakfast of muesli, almonds and milk. After three hours, they then consumed a 250 milliliter drink containing around 330 calories with different macronutrient contents. One was highest in protein, one was highest in carbohydrate, and the other was highest in fat. This was followed by a buffet-style meal where subjects were allowed to eat as little or as much pasta as they wanted. Subjects were then free to eat as desired throughout the rest of the day. It was found that in each condition, calories consumed during the meal after the milkshake drink and for the rest of the day were similar between conditions, indicating that the macronutrient content didn't have a significant influence. So overall, it seems that consuming a high protein diet might limit your total daily calorie intake to a small magnitude. This could be a result of greater short term satiety, which prevents overconsumption at a single sitting. It could also be due to the other characteristics of high protein foods, such as containing a lower calorie density than high fat foods. Or it could just be that higher protein intakes are associated with a lower calorie intake due to more health conscious individuals making healthier food choices. In any case, we shouldn't expect drastic reductions in habitual calorie intake from increasing protein intake alone. The other way in which protein might influence weight loss is via its influence on energy expenditure. There are two potential ways in which protein intake might influence this. The first is via the thermic effect of feeding. This refers to the temporary increase in basal metabolic rate that occurs from eating, digesting, transporting and storing the food we eat. This is usually the smallest component of energy expenditure, only thought to contribute around 10% of total energy expenditure in most cases. Some claim that a high protein diet increases the energy burned via the thermic effect of feeding. And while this seems to be true to some extent, the magnitude probably isn't meaningful in most cases. This review paper estimated that a high protein diet increases the thermic effect of feeding by around 7 calories per 1000 calories of total energy ingested for every 10% increase in protein intake. As a practical example, the authors estimated that increasing protein intake from 20 to 30% within a 2000 calorie diet would increase energy expenditure by 14 calories. And in most cases, this small increase in energy expenditure is not going to be significant enough to rely on for promoting weight loss. And when we look at more practical applications of high protein diets, the outcomes are not all that impressive. For example, this study compared the effects of a moderate versus high protein diet on energy expenditure. 43 adults consumed a 2100 calorie diet with differing macronutrient compositions on two separate occasions. One was a high protein diet consisting of 40% protein or 211 grams per day, while the other was a moderate protein diet consisting of 15% protein or 83 grams per day. It was found that 24 hour energy expenditure was 81 calories higher on average during the high protein diet compared with the moderate protein diet. However, it is unclear if this was actually a result of an increase in the thermic effect of feeding since resting, basal and sleep energy expenditure were all similar between conditions. So the differences in total energy expenditure may have been a result of activity levels rather than protein intake. The other way in which protein intake might influence energy expenditure is via basal metabolic rate. It is well established that high protein diets are beneficial for increasing lean mass or retaining lean mass during weight loss via exercise. For example, this study compared the effects of consuming a moderate versus high protein diet on body composition changes during a calorie deficit. 40 untrained men consumed a diet with an approximate 40% deficit while performing a 6 day per week training program including aerobic and resistance training for 4 weeks. Half the subjects consumed a high protein intake of 2.4 grams per kilogram per day, while the other half consumed a moderate protein intake of 1.2 grams per kilogram per day. It was found that both groups lost a similar amount of total body weight, but the high protein group saw a small increase in lean mass, while the moderate protein group approximately maintained lean mass. 
And it is also known that lean mass burns significantly more energy at rest than fat mass. This review paper estimated that resting energy expenditure decreases by approximately 13 calories per day for every kilogram of muscle lost, compared with a decrease of only 4.5 calories per day for every kilogram of fat lost. So if we can preserve more lean mass during weight loss, our basal metabolic rate will likely not be reduced quite as much. And as mentioned, a high protein diet can help to preserve lean mass during weight loss when combined with exercise, particularly resistance training. So overall, a high protein diet may increase energy expenditure to a small magnitude, which could in theory help to promote weight loss to a small extent. There may be short term benefits from increasing the thermic effect of feeding, and more long term benefits from preserving and gaining greater lean mass. Although it is unclear if these effects would actually result in significant weight loss, or if appetite would simply upregulate slightly to accommodate this slightly greater energy expenditure. So in summary, how does protein intake influence weight loss? Well, consuming a high protein diet may have some slight benefits for weight loss. A high protein intake may help to decrease calorie intake via a reduction in short term satiety. High protein foods in general seem to be a little more satiating compared with higher fat or carbohydrate foods. However, this seems to mainly be the case for single foods in isolation over short term timeframes. When looking at high protein diets as a whole, the satiety effect still seems to be somewhat prevalent, but only to a small magnitude. The other way in which protein may benefit weight loss is via an increase in energy expenditure. Consuming more protein may increase the thermic effect of feeding by a small margin. Although this doesn't seem to be meaningful enough in most cases to promote a notable calorie deficit independently. A high protein diet can also result in greater lean mass preservation during weight loss when consumed in conjunction with an exercise routine, especially resistance training. Since lean mass burns significantly more calories at rest than fat mass, this will likely limit the reduction in basal metabolic rate experienced through weight loss. So overall, I would say that a high protein diet could have small benefits for weight loss in some cases. However, it is not something to rely upon independently to produce meaningful weight loss. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.